Another way to quilt your blocks is to do free motion quilting. Basically what that means is you uh, disable the feed dogs on your machine or cover it with a plate if that's what your machine does and then you're able to move your fabric in any direction you want and create any pattern you want. So that's what we're going to look at now. The first thing to do is to change your foot. You will need a free motion embroidery foot or a darning foot. This is what they look like. They have a spring on them and as you stitch it bounces up and down. So to add this to the machine you've got a screw hole here which means you've got to take off the screw and the ankle on your machine. Your machine may come with a free motion foot. If it doesn't you'll need to purchase one separately. One thing that you do need to bear in mind is whether it is a short shank or a long shank machine. This is your shank on your machine and short shank means that when the presser foot is down that this distance from here to the screw so from the bottom of the plate to the screw is about an inch if your screw is much further up your shank here then that will be a long shank machine and you will need a different foot you'll soon find out whether you've got the right one because it won't fit if it's wrong so to install it I'm going to loosen off that screw pop the screw hole underneath and just finger tighten it and then show you if I drop the needle down this is the screw that holds the needle in place the top of that foot must go above it so that every time the needle goes up and down that foot bounces like that so that's okay so I'm going to take my screwdriver I'm going to tighten that off the next thing I need to do is deal with these feed dogs. Feed dogs are the teeth that control the way your fabric moves through your sewing machine and they're actually designed to pull your fabric through. Well we don't want that, we want to be in control. So sometimes some machines will have a plate that goes over the top. This machine like many others actually has a switch on the back here that when I clip it those feed dogs disappear. Now something to note, when um, you switch them back up again, a lot of machines, if I switch it back up you'll see they don't come up straight away until you turn the flywheel. So just make sure if when you switch them back on again, that if they don't come up straight away that you do actually move them a little. Right, so put those out of the way. And now I'm ready to do a little bit of free motion. Right, so the block I've chosen here is I have my 60 degree diamond and I have appliqued it down onto my background. I've actually chosen a green to do this because I wanted to outline my shape. So when you're doing your appliqué, it doesn't always have to be invisible. You can actually make a feature of it. But now what I want to do is do some designs inside these shapes as well just to give them a little bit more interest so i'm going to do some curves and some little perhaps um, wobbly bits you know we shall see so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start in the center of my first piece so it's up to you how you do this and how you start but what you do want to try and do is first of all have it on a straight stitch with the uh, needle in the center so I'm just going to press my center point. So now the needle is in the center of my foot. Just makes it easier for me to see. And then we are going to drop the needle down and hold onto the top thread. Needle up and pull. And that will actually bring my bobbin thread up onto the top. That means that it's not underneath. So it's not likely to get caught in my uh, quilting underneath and sort of tangle me up. So I've placed my needle into the fabric so that everything's nice and secure and um, if I do accidentally move it that I'm not going to end up with quite a big stitch. The next thing I want to do is do a few stitches just in the same place. That's kind of securing it. What you can also do with these two spare threads is you can actually stitch them in um, afterwards or sew them underneath and then quilt over the top. But I find with a few little stitches like that at the beginning, um, I can actually trim them and it saves me stitching bits in. 
So what I'm going to do with my diamond is I'm going to do some bounced curves. Now personally I find that if I'm doing uh, certain shapes and curves I can do them one way and not the other. So if I'm doing a feather I can go beautifully up one side but then I find it quite tricky to come down the other side and um, that's quite often the case with uh, us quilters. So just don't fight it. All I'll do is just go back down to the bottom and then go up the other side. So I'm actually going to quilt towards me on this diamond and I'm going to go up one side and actually I'm going to stop there because that thread is just catching here back on itself back to the beginning now I'm going to do the other side and try and make them about the same size. But this is free motion, so we don't expect it to be perfect. All right, so now I've got my two side curves or my two side loops, and then I'm going to go up the middle and do a large one. Turn that around. You can see we've got almost like three fingers and then I'm going to repeat it. So go along with the next diamond shape, moving it smoothly, curving round. Back to that centre. Try and keep your hand movements relatively smooth. If you find that your curves are coming out a little jerky, then perhaps try straight lines or points. Go with what you enjoy doing. So now I'm coming up to do these pieces here. And I just want to kind of think about where everything's going to go because I want them to all look relatively similar, but I don't want them, or they won't be exact, they won't be precise because of the technique we're using. And that's half the fun. So play around with the designs as well. You could actually do something very different in here to the other ones if you wanted to. I've got my fabrics in pairs, so you could choose to do a different set of quilting in each pair or a different set of quilting in each diamond. And then my final piece. Try to keep the combination of hand movements and stitch speed or the speed at which you're pressing your foot down even. You will find one that's comfortable for you but if you move your hands too fast you will end up with very big stitches. And then if you move your hands too slowly, you'll end up with very small, tight, restricted stitches. So just try and get a happy medium. And then I'm flowing back into my last point 
I'm going to go up and down in the same spot a couple of times and then let's take this out trim the bobbin thread too and we finished our quilted block.